Announcements for you to note in your bulletin. First of all, sign the pew registers in your pew. And on the next congregational meeting will be November the 12th. At that meeting, we will elect council members and adopt the 2024 budget. The community Thanksgiving service will be held here on Sunday, November the 19th at 6 p.m. A family Thanksgiving meal will be on Saturday, November the 18th at 6 o'clock. And just stay tuned for more details and a reservation form to fill out for that. Reminder that funeral arrangements for Martha Baker um, the service will be this Saturday, this coming Saturday, November the 4th. All of that information is in your bulletin, along with an address for Beth and Becky, if you would like to send your sympathy cards. The call committee has an update in your bulletin. Please refer to that. And then the colorful pages here are on Samaritan's Purse, who is hiring temporary employees, and also recycling Halloween candy wrappers. So just read that, and we're looking forward to seeing everybody here this afternoon for Trunk or Treat, 5 to 7. We will be taking our food donations to Unity Mobile Meals sometime later in the week, but if you would still like to donate, just bring it by the church. Okay? Thank you. Thank you, Benny. Good morning, everyone. Good morning. We uh, had a uh, a delightful fellowship time fishing at the Outer Banks, but we ten of us brought back fifteen fish for the whole week. Now we threw a lot back that were, you know, about this long. <laughs> This long. <laughs> so, uh, but uh, it was a, a beautiful week down there to enjoy a fellowship with friends. Uh, public service announcement. Uh, next, before you go to bed next Saturday night, <laughs> turn your clock back. One hour. Daylight saving time ends. If you don't turn it back, you'll get here before the breakfast prepares. <laughs> so you'll have to wait an hour to have breakfast. So uh, I just wanted to share that with you. To, as you, have, you have to put it in your calendar to make sure you get that done. Uh, a lot of fancy equipment will do that for you. But uh, you have to get it in your mind just right to, uh, to adjust but it's great to be worshiping on this Reformation Sunday that we celebrate today. Let's prepare our hearts with our prelude.
Would you stand, please? In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hid, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves and the truth is not in us. But if we confess our sins, God who is faithful and just will forgive our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Most merciful God, we confess that we are in bondage to sin and cannot free ourselves. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. Forgive us, renew us, and lead us so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your holy name. Amen. Almighty God in his mercy has given his son to die for us and for his sake forgives us all our sins. As a called and ordained minister of the church of Christ and by his authority, I therefore declare to you the entire forgiveness of all your sins. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Our first hymn.
the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you. In peace, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord have mercy. For the peace from above and for our salvation, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord have mercy. For the peace of the whole world, for the well-being of the church of God, and for the unity of all, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord have mercy. For this holy house, and for all who offer here their worship and praise, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord have mercy. Help. Save, comfort, and defend us, gracious Lord. Amen. Amen. Let us pray. O oh Lord God, Heavenly Father, pour out your Holy Spirit upon your faithful people. Keep them steadfast in your grace and truth. Protect and comfort them in all temptation. Defend them against all enemies of your word. And bestow upon the church your saving peace. Through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. I'd like to invite the young folks to come down for a brief time together. church to change. But it was also so long ago that a lot of people couldn't read. How many of you can read? Yeah? Can't read yet. You'll be reading soon. Yeah. Yeah, you'll be reading soon. But a lot of people couldn't read, so all they could go on was what people told them. 
if they were telling them the wrong thing, if you didn't know what a ball was and I showed you that cue, you might think it was a ball, might you? Until you found out better. So Martin Luther said, we need to change some things in the church because it is God alone. It's faith in Jesus that we need to have, not selling lots of things and doing lots of things, but by the Word alone. And the Word was Jesus. Yeah. So through that, Luther really didn't want to make the church split up. He just wanted them to change things. But as a result of that, we do have the Lutheran church. We're all Lutherans. Uh, and then, not long after that, they invented this wonderful thing called the printing press. And Luther and some others worked, and they put the Bible in the language of the people because before that it was written in Hebrew and Greek and some Latin. And people couldn't read that. They were German people. What did they speak? German. German, yeah. That would be like me giving you a, a Bible from France. And if you, thank you, Claire. And if you didn't know French, could you read it? No. No. You didn't know how to, and it wasn't in your language. So Luther fixed that. And we call that the Reformation. He sort of reformed the church. And he made it so that people could understand that Jesus Christ is the way. Because he came and died for us and paid for our sins so that we can be with him forever and ever. So, this week, Claire's going to come around. Now, I had a I had a big thing of Play-Doh because I'm just a big person, so <laughs> that little Play-Doh wasn't cutting it for me. But you can choose a color of Play-Doh. Claire, if you'll go around and let everybody, when you get finished, you may have one. <laughs> like we don't have any Play-Doh in mine. <laughs> and when you're making things and you smush it all up and you make it again, that's called reforming, a reformation. And I hope you'll remember that Luther helped people see that it was faith in Jesus alone that saves us <laughs> and not us. Can we pray? Kind and gracious Heavenly Father, we thank you for these children today. We thank you for your word. We thank you for your son, Jesus Christ, who saves us. Be with them now as they go to children's church. Open your word to them that they know you even better. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Our first reading for Reformation Sunday comes from the 14th chapter of Revelation, beginning with the 6th verse. I saw another angel flying directly overhead with an eternal gospel to proclaim to those who dwell on earth, to every nation and tribe and language and people. And he said with a loud voice, Fear God and give him glory, because the hour of his judgment has come, and worship him who made heaven and earth, the sea and the springs of water. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Let us read responsively Psalm 46. God is our refuge and strength, a very present help in trouble. Therefore, we will not fear, though the earth be moved, 
and the, the mountains, mountains be toppled into the depths of the sea. Though its waters rage and foam, and though the mountains tremble at its tumult, the Lord, Lord of hosts host is with us. us. God the God of Jacob, Jacob is, is our stronghold. stronghold. There is a river whose streams make glad the city of God, the holy habitation of the Most High. God, God is, is in, in the midst of her, and she, she shall not be overthrown. God, God shall help her at the break of day. The nations make a do, and the kingdoms are shaken. God has spoken, and the earth shall melt away. The, the Lord, Lord of hosts is with us. us. The God, God of Jacob is, is our stronghold. stronghold. Come now and look upon the works of the Lord, what awesome things he has done on earth. It is, it is he, he who, who makes wars to cease in all the world. He, he breaks, breaks the bow, the shatters the spear, and, and burns the shields with fire. Be still then, and know that I am God. I will be exalted among the nations. I will be exalted in the earth. The Lord of hosts is with us. The God of Jacob is our stronghold. Here ends the reading of the psalm. The second lesson is written in the third chapter of Romans, beginning with the 19th verse. Now we know that whatever the law says, it speaks to those who are under the law, so that every mouth may be stopped and the whole world may be held accountable to God. For by works of the Lord, no human being will be justified in his sight, since through the law comes knowledge of sin. But now the righteousness of God has been manifested apart from the law, although the law and the prophets bear witness to it. The righteousness of God through faith in Jesus Christ for all who believe. There, for there is no distinction for all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God and are justified by his grace as a gift through the redemption that is in Christ Jesus, whom God put forward as a propitiation for his blood to be received by faith. This was to show God's righteousness because in his divine forbearance he had passed over former sins it was to show his righteousness at the present time so that he might be just and the justifier of the one who has faith in Jesus. Then what becomes of our boasting? It is excluded. By what kind of law? By the law of works? No, by the law of faith. For we hold that one is justified by faith apart from works of the law. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. <laughs> the Holy Gospel according to St. John, the 8th chapter. Glory, Glory to you, O Lord. Lord. Jesus said to the Jews who had believed him, if you abide in my word, you are truly my disciples, and you will know the truth, and the truth will set you free. They answered him, We are offsprings of Abraham and have never been enslaved to anyone. How is it that you say you will become free? Jesus answered them, Truly, truly, I say to you, Everyone who practices sin is a slave to sin. The slave does not remain in the house forever. The son remains forever. So if the son sets you free, you will be free indeed. The gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Let me begin today by uh, sharing just a little bit about that, the lessons that come before the gospel lesson. Because in those two verses from 
the 14th chapter of Revelation, this last book of the Bible, we hear the words of the first of three angels with messages for John. In this vision, the first angel tells John of an eternal gospel that is to be proclaimed to all people of the earth. The time of judgment has come. It is time to worship the one true God, creator of heaven and earth. The ultimate goal of God's final judgment is that the whole creation would glorify him. The time for repentance is here. And then when we look at Psalm 46, we hear the words that comfort us. Because in the face of great hardship, that psalm proclaims that the Lord God is our shelter and our refuge. He helps us in times of trouble. The trouble that he mentions is true trouble indeed. The earth giving away, mountains being moved, pushed into the sea. And the nations raging in warfare. The Lord is with us in these major crises. But also in our own personal struggles as well. He shields us like a mighty fortress. And then, of course, one of the most beloved passages in that psalm verse is to meditate in prayer found in verse 10. Be still and know that I am God. Notice how these words follow the image of crashing waves and the noise of destruction. Be still and know that I am God. And, of course, that Romans passage. St. Paul describes how the law of God works. He explains that it only works on those who are under the law. Meaning, it only affects those who are working diligently to keep the law. When we live under the law, we are accountable to God by the law. Now unfortunately. We can't keep the law perfectly. The good news that Paul. Was trying to drill into the heads of those that were listening to him. And to us today as we hear that passage. Was that. We are made right. With God through Christ and not through the law because we all fall short of living up to that law but we are tempted to work harder and harder and harder to fulfill that which does not give us life even though the law gives us an understanding of what sin is, no one can be justified by following the law. In God's perfect time, he reveals his righteousness in his son, Jesus. The gospel was shown apart from the law, precisely because that law can't save. And then when we come to John chapter 8, we hear those words and shortly, these words came shortly after Jesus told his disciples that he was going away, going back to the Father. 
in heaven. He told this to a group of Jews who had followed him that if they would abide in his word, then they would truly be his disciples. And their response indicates their lack of understanding about what Jesus was offering to them. Jesus' point was they were unaware of their blind spots like we are. They had no clue that they were slaves to sin or that they even needed to be freed by the mercy of Jesus. We can understand from Jesus' words the negative of what he said because he said, if you don't abide in my words, then you will not be a part of what I am doing. And furthermore, you won't be a part of what God is doing. And since Jesus is one with the Father, that word abide comes from the Greek word meno, which means to stay or to remain. So by remaining in Jesus' words, the disciples and all who would listen were promised the truth which would set them free. They would be truly liberated from all that holds eternity in captivity, which is sin, death, and the devil. Now Martin Luther states in his book, Christian Liberty, this following statement. A Christian is a perfectly free Lord of all, subject to none. A Christian is a perfectly dutiful servant of all and subject to all. Luther likewise states that we are free, but at the same time, we are also servants. That doesn't make much sense to us in the world that we live in. We're free because of the freedom that we have in Christ. But at the same time, we're servants. Servants to Christ and to the people that we serve. We serve those people in Christ's name. Now this echoes what Jesus is talking about in the verses in the gospel. We are slaves to sin, but at the same time, Jesus says we can be free in and through him, the Son of God. Martin Luther is known for what could be one of his fav famous sayings, which we'll talk a little bit more about next Sunday. That saying in Latin is, if I can pronounce it correctly, simul justus epicator, which translated means we are simultaneously saint and sinner. Saints are believers of Christ because of Christ's action in our lives through baptism. But at the same time, we are sinners. Never having fully arrived at our sainthood until we come to that glorious day in the presence of Christ at the gates of heaven. That's the distinction between saints on earth and saints in heaven. And in the same way, we are slaves to Christ and our neighbor. 
But at the same time, we are free in Christ because of the price that he paid for our sins. We're never fully complete while here on this earth. We're never going to be without sin in our earthly lives. That's why we need our confession. We do that before worship each Sunday. And I hope you will do that each night when you go to bed. And each morning when you wake up. Now I haven't mentioned the Reformation in this sermon. But the Reformation which we celebrate on this day is to confirm our lives, in our lives, that we are free to serve. Christ and our neighbor. And by serving as God's children, we are made free by what God has done for us. Giving his very life, his son's life for our sins. So Christ is constantly molding us and shaping us to be what he wants us to be. So that we can be free in him to serve him and our neighbor. And as you can see, there's a paradox to, that, to our Christian life. I'm free in Christ to become what God truly created me for. In his image, but at the same time, I'm a slave to sin because that nature is always within me until through Christ at the gates of heaven it is finally removed. And so we're called to acknowledge our sin before God. Not just once, but each and every day. As I said, before you go to bed, when you get up in the morning, and maybe even at noon and mid-afternoon, because in our earthly beings, we can sin from one minute to another. You know, as we acknowledge our sin and our need for God's saving grace, God drowns that sin over and over and over again when we confess. Just as he did in the waters of our baptism. Cleansing us and raising us to new life. I like the saying that is attributed to Luther that says, Every night when you wash your face before you go to bed, remember the waters of your baptism. Remember the waters of your baptism. So that we might serve God through Christ and our neighbor in Christ's name. So truly, on this Reformation Sunday, we celebrate that we are freed by Christ to serve God and serve our neighbor, trusting and obeying his word. And I'm so glad that Lisa picked out that hymn, Trust and Obey, that we're getting ready to sing. Because that is what we should strive to do each and every day. Trust in God and obey his word. Let's sing that hymn now.
Let us confess our faith with the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, and died in spirit. He descended into hell. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Let us pray for the whole people of God in Christ Jesus and for all people according to their needs. Almighty God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, we give you praise and thanks for all your generous goodness and mercy. We especially thank and praise you for the gift of your Son, our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, who died for all. We praise and thank you for sending the Holy Spirit on this earth to dwell and share your mission in each one of us. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Lord Jesus, strengthen, sustain, and guide your bride, the church, to proclaim your love and demonstrate the power of your Holy Spirit. Make her bold and courageous in the face of ridicule and persecution in the world. We give you thanks for the life of Martin Luther, reformer, teacher, saint, and sinner, and all he contributed to the faith of generations that followed him. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. God of compassion, in times of weeping and mourning, when we are ill or suffering or in times of personal difficulties and issues, we wait upon your mercy, trusting that you will never leave or forsake us. Give hope and wrap your loving arms around those who wait in patience and faith whom we name in our hearts before you. We especially pray for our brothers and sisters in Maine who are mourning and those who witnessed evil during this time of tragedy. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Gracious God, in a world overshadowed by sin and strife, we come before you with heavy hearts, seeking your divine mercy and peace for the people living in Israel, the Gaza Strip, and the surrounding regions. We pray for the leaders of the nations, that their hearts may be stirred towards justice, reconciliation, and the well-being of all people. We pray for those whose lives have been lost, for those torn from their home and families, as well as for those who are being held hostage in this brutal conflict. We pray for comfort, protection, and healing for wounded spirits and bodies, knowing that all true healing is found in you alone. Lord, may your boundless love lead us through these dark times toward a horizon of hope, understanding, and enduring peace. Help us to never lose sight of the promises we have in Jesus and to never lose hope in the one who through his cross and resurrection from the dead has secured our lives eternally. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. God of wisdom, God Concordia, as we look to discern the new pastor that you have already selected for us. Our church is seeking someone to lead us into the future. Help us to do your will as we walk together as one body of faith through the call process. Give us strength, patience, and love for each other as we journey through this search. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Into your hands, O Lord, we commend all for whom we pray, trusting in your mercy through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen.
Let us pray. God of love, you have provided for our every need from your abundant bounty. Receive our tithes, our time, and our abilities in response to all you have given us. Grant us grateful hearts that we may give generously to those in need, thereby show your love to the world around us. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give him thanks and praise. Blessed are you, Lord of heaven and earth, in mercy for our fallen world, you gave your only Son, that all those who believe in him should not perish, but have eternal life. We give thanks to you for the salvation you have prepared for us through Jesus Christ. Send now your Holy Spirit into our hearts, that we may receive our Lord with a living faith as he comes to us in his Holy Supper. Amen. Amen. Come, Lord Jesus. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. And again, after the supper, he took the cup gave thanks and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. For as often as we eat of this bread and drink from this cup, we proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. O Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Have mercy on us and grant us peace. Amen. Today we will, we will, I will give out the bread. We will alternate between side to side. You may come up the center aisle like we've been doing, and then, and then we will alternate the persons. Would you raise your hand if you would like for me to bring communion to you? The body of Christ given for you. 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 Oh, did I miss someone? 
<laughs> the body of Christ given for you. body of Christ given for you.
the body and blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in His grace. Amen. Amen. O Lord, we give you thanks and praise for this sacrament. Strengthen us by the power of this gift, your heavenly food. Through it may we all be healed and filled with your faith and hope in Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Amen. Amen. Our last hymn. And serve the Lord. We will. Thanks be to God.